As we patiently wait for another NRL season to commence, we are filled with excitement with new signings, new coaches and new players. For this list, we will look back at the best new player for every season of the NRL era to see how their careers panned out after their impressive rookie season. Whether they turned into one of the greatest players of all time or had a relatively short career, this is Greatest Game of All and we answer the question, what happened to every rookie of the year? 1998 Mark McGlinden. From Rookie of the Year to a pitch invader at the 2022 NRL Grand Final, Mark McGlinden helped his Raiders to a 7th place finish and reach the minor semi-final in 1998, becoming the Raiders leading try scorer, crossing the stripe 12 times. He played 165 games for his one and only NRL club the Raiders, finishing his NRL career in 2004. He then went across to the Super League to play a season for the London Broncos and three seasons for Harlequins before returning to Australia to play three games of rugby union for the Queensland Reds. He now co-directs a Pilates, yoga, aerobics and dance company called Animal Lardies, which is an exercise program for children aged 4 to 11 that includes an animal theme. Infamously, he was arrested for pitch invasion at the 2022 Grand Final, entering the field wearing a t-shirt with End Coal, Gas and Oil on the front and For Our Kids on the back, in protest against the government's inaction to prevent climate change. He was later fined $5,000 and banned from attending any NRL games in the future. Nineteen ninety nine, Michael Vella. Although he played eight games the previous year, the taste of NRL ignited Michael Vella in nineteen ninety nine as he represented his state and country, playing game two and three of the Origin series for New South Wales and all three games in Australia's triumph of the Tri Nation series, being called into the squad to replace an injured Gordon Tallis. Largely thanks to Vella's efforts in the middle, the Eels finished second on the ladder and made it to the preliminary final against the eventual grand final winners, the Storm. He would go on to play 159 games for the Eels, played 10 Origins for New South Wales and played 8 games for Australia, which included being part of the 2000 World Cup winning squad. He played his final 5 seasons of his career for Hull in the Super League and was captain for most of his time at the club. Vela has undertaken many new career changes post rugby league career, including personal training, business development and an ambassador for the NRL and the Eels, including being on the judiciary panel. 2000 to Cesar Lavia. Imagine signing an NRL contract despite never playing rugby league. That's what Tessa Lavia did as the rugby union high school prodigy and junior All Black signed with the Storm in 1999 playing most of the season for their feeder club the Norse Devils. Having played only 13 first grade games including the Storm's World Club Challenge victory in 2000, he was selected for the Kiwis in the Anzac Test match and would go on to play four games for his country. His rookie season was so impressive that he broke up the highly skilled and premiership winning halves pairing of Scott Hill and Brett Kamali, with Hill moving to lock. He scored 190 points that season and scored 24 of those in one match against the Dragons, scoring two tries and kicking eight out of nine goals. Play. Levia. He would play 44 games for Melbourne and played only 5 games for the Northern Eagles before switching back to Rugby Union where he played for the Blues and the Chiefs in the Super Rugby competition as well as representing Samoa in the 2011 Rugby World Cup. Lavier has taken up many coaching roles post-career including the Chiefs under-20s team and head of rugby for prestigious Auckland High Schools, Kings College and St Kennegurn. 2001 Braith and Astor. Playing 288 games across three different clubs, Braith and Astor went from winning the jersey flag competition with the Bulldogs in 2000 to becoming one of the most influential players in the Bulldogs' shocking rise to the top in 2001, going from 11th place to 2nd place in one season. Anasta was known for his versatility and extensive knowledge of the game, being able to play in the halves, in the centres and even at lock. He scored 13 tries in his rookie season, leading the Bulldogs to the finals but he was unable to play the semi-final against the Sharks due to injury. 
He was able to recover in time for the Kangaroos Ashes Tour, where he scored a try in only his second game. They're here for Price. Oh, and he's come up with it. The substitute. Anasta has come up with it. He also played 10 games for New South Wales, won a premiership with the Bulldogs in 2004, and the Delhi M58 of the Year Award in 2005. He went on to play 147 games for the Roosters and 31 games for the Tigers, retiring in 2014. Anasta has joined Fox Sports as a commentator and broadcaster on Super Saturday and the Sunday Ticket and is now the host of popular NRL TV show NRL 360. He is also general manager of his sports management company, Siru Sports, which manage both rugby league players and golfers such as Cameron Munster, Lachlan Ilias and Anthony Quayle. 2002, Matt Utai. Also starting off his career with the Bulldogs, quick and powerful winger Matt Utai turned heads in his rookie season in 2002 where the Bulldogs completely dominated the competition until they were stripped of their points due to the salary cap breaches. Nevertheless, Utai scored 13 tries in his 21 games during the season, including this try against the Yields. Utah's inside the 10. Utai will score. He played his first four test matches for New Zealand at the end of the season, where he also scored a try on debut. He's got He's got the he went on to play most of his 167 game career at the Bulldogs, winning a premiership in 2004, scoring two tries. Ryan for Utai. He will make it. Nesta for Ponga. He beats one. Utai for the corner. Represented Samoa in the 2008 World Cup and finished off his career playing 40 games for the Tigers. Utai played a season for Auburn in the Ron Massey Cup in 2017 and is a loving father and husband, currently spending time with family. Unfortunately, due to the Players Association threatening to boycott the Dally M Awards, there was no award for 2003, which leads us to 2004, Carmichael Hunt. The superb class of 2004, which involved Cooper Cronk, Sonny Bill Williams, and the winner of the award, Broncos fullback Carmichael Hunt. Debuting at only 17 years of age, Hunt played the whole first season at fullback, scoring 15 tries with four of them in one match against the Rabbitohs. Him away from Watts, he's still going. He's going to score himself. A third place finish and a semi-final exit was the end of his rookie season, but he went on to play 127 games, which included winning a premiership in 2006, played 10 Origins for Queensland, winning in every series he played in, and played 11 tests for Australia. It was dropped there for Smith, then for Lockyer. Tried presents itself. Hunt will score for the Kangaroos. After playing rugby union in France for 15 games, Hunt shocked the rugby league world by becoming one of the first modern day players to switch sports to Aussie rules football. Signing with the newly established Gold Coast Suns, playing 44 games from 2011 to 2014, which included kicking a game-winning goal on the siren. Is he the hero that the Suns believe he is? He definitely is! He then went back to Rugby Union, playing for the Queensland Reds, New South Wales Waratahs and the Wallabies, before making a shock return to Rugby League in 2021, playing just the two games for the Broncos. He is now the head coach of the Broncos feeder club South Logan Magpies and for the Cook Islands international team. 2005, Tim Smith. Parramatta's rise to the top of the ladder in 2005 came from absolutely nowhere and the same can be said for their newest halfback, Tim Smith. He was one of Parramatta's best players in 2005 where he ranked up a record 40 try assists, which is the most in a season during the NRL era. He helped his Eels reach the preliminary final, where they shockingly lost to the 5th place Cowboys 29-0. He went on to play 90 games in the NRL, playing 71 for the Eels, went across to the Super League to play for Wigan, came back to play 19 games for the Sharks, and finished his career playing for Wakefield and Salford. Smith now lives in Melbourne with his family, where he's actually the head tackling coach for his kids' junior AFL club. 2006, Jared Hayne from one of the best players of the modern era to being the headline of one of Australia's biggest sexual assault court cases involving jail time. The roller coaster career of Jared Hayne all started in 2006, bursting onto the scene midway through the season, helping the Eels sneak into the finals. He scored a whopping 17 tries in only 16 games, 
which included scoring four tries in a round 18 clash against the Knights. A spectacular try! A loss to the minor premiers the Storm ended their season, but it was the following year where Hayne had the opportunity to represent New South Wales, scoring this brilliant try on debut. He would go on to play 23 games for his state, winning three Brad Fittler medals and play 11 games for Australia, which included a World Cup win in 2013. He played 214 games, playing 191 for the Eels where he won the Dalian medal in 2009 and 2014, and 23 games for the Titans. Haynes switched sports to play in the NFL for the San Francisco 49ers in one of the most talked about code switches of all time making the main squad with no junior American football experience. Hayne the carry. Hayne with a hole. Jared Hayne, nice cutback. Hayne looking for a little bit of clearance. In 2021, Hayne was infamously convicted of two counts of aggravated sexual assault, and after a retrial in 2023, Hayne was convicted of rape and is sentenced to four years, nine months in prison. 2007 is Ralph Folau. In arguably the best rookie season out of anyone on this list, a 17-year-old Israel Folau produced some freakish talent, making his 2007 season something to remember. He scored a massive 21 tries, which is the most by any NRL rookie in a season, and was tied most out of any player that season. He was able to help his Storm win the Grand Final, which is now vacant due to the Storm's salary cap breach, and due to a Justin Hodges injury, he was called into the Australian squad, making his debut at only 18 years of age, which was the youngest debutant at the time, until Sione Mataudia debuted in 2014. He would go on to play 8 games for the Kangaroos, scoring 6 tries and played 8 games for the Maroons, scoring 7 tries, including this famous try in 2008. Thurston, Thurston kicks again at Anthony Quinn and the jump, they've got it again! Folau's time in Melbourne was short-lived as he moved to the Broncos for two seasons, rounding out his NRL career at 91 games. But that wasn't the end of Israel Folau, as he actually signed with new AFL franchise the GWS Giants, where he played 13 games for the club. He then switched sports yet again to play rugby union for the Waratahs, playing 96 games and played 73 games for the Wallabies, where he won the John Eels medal for the Wallabies Player of the Year three times. He returned to rugby league in 2020, playing a season for Catlins in the Super League before switching back to rugby union, where he currently plays in Japan and represents the Tongan international team. 2008, Chris Sandow. After using seven different halfbacks to this point, Chris Sandow finally got his opportunity on the first grade scene midway through the 2008 season. The halfback only played 13 games during the season, which is the least amount of games to win the Rookie of the Year award. And his debut match was a huge factor in deciding this, as he kicked the match ceiling field goal late in the match. He went on to play 84 games for South and 75 games for the Eels before playing for Warrington in the Super League. He came back to play a season for Norse Devils in the Queensland Cup and the Moranba Miners near Mackay. Sandow was actually charged for allegedly assaulting a police officer, which led him being in custody. However, at the start of 2023, Sandow was found not guilty and acquitted of all charges. 2009, Jamal Idris. The big hitting 6 foot 5 giant centre Jamal Idris got a taste of first grade in 2008 but really made an impact in his rookie season in 2009, helping his Bulldogs go from last place to second place in one season. A preliminary final exit saw him finish his rookie career with 20 games, scoring 7 tries. He played one game each for New South Wales and Australia, scoring a try in each of those appearances. Spins it out. Then from Hayne, they've gone out to a Lion. He gets it back to Idris. He scores on Dubu. His 136 game career was rattled with injury, 
and club changes as he played for the Bulldogs, the Titans, the Panthers and the Tigers, where he tore his ACL, forcing him into retirement at the end of the 2017 season. Idris is currently living in New South Wales, enjoying retirement with family and friends. 2010, Matt Gillett. Playing exactly 200 games for his one and only club, the Broncos, Matt Gillett started off his career with a bang, scoring a try on debut in 2010. Tippy Hyde now takes on Ty Williams. Doesn't get the Williams double, but got to pass away. He went on to score 12 tries in his 21 games that season, playing quite a few different positions, including centre, 5'8", lock, and his primary position on the edge. He represented Queensland 20 times, pulling on the Maroons jersey 7 out of his 10 years in first grade. He also played and won all 12 games for Australia and won the 2017 World Cup final where he scored a try during the tournament. Now Gillett stepped inside, Garland is over. Ongoing injuries forced Gillett into retirement in 2019 and he now works at the Broncos in game development and is an ambassador for both the Ronald McDonald House in South East Queensland and Falcons Footy Kids, which is with the Sunshine Coast Falcons in the Queensland Cup. 2011, Daily Cherry Evans. From round one to the grand final, DCE played every single match for the Seagulls in 2011, all from the very important position of halfback. Along with setting up his teammates, the 22-year-old scored seven tries with this being his first. He led Manly all the way to the grand final in 2011, where he also scored a try. It's gone to Cherry Evans. They've really got them at sixes and sevens. Cherry Evans. He would play one game for Australia in their Four Nations win against Wales at the end of the season, and would go on to play 21 games, including a 2013 World Cup win, and would captain 15 out of the 22 Origins he played for Queensland. He won the Clive Churchill medal in his team's grand final loss to the Roosters in 2013 and won the Dell M Halfback of the Year in 2014. At the time of recording, DCE has played 305 games for his one and only club, the Sea Eagles, and is still playing for the club. 2012, Adam Reynolds. The rookie season of Adam Reynolds can be summed up in three massive career highlight moments for the halfback. A chase down try saving tackle against the Eels. And so is Reynolds who saves a try. A golden point game winning field goal from 35 meters out. He lights up, the crowd lights up. And a game winning try in the final minute to beat the Roosters. Reynolds! Reynolds! This along with three tries, a goal kicking percentage of 85% and leading his team to the preliminary final is why he earned that year's rookie of the year. He would go on to play just the two games for New South Wales in 2016 and play 231 games for the Rabbitohs before signing with the Broncos in 2022, playing 43 games and is still at the Brisbane-based club at the time of recording. 2013, George Burgess. Following in the footsteps of his brothers Luke, Tom and Sam, George Burgess was the best of the rookies in 2013 with his barnstorming runs and solid hits making the Rabbitohs forward pack as dominant as ever. Add on seven tries and you've got a very impressive rookie season. He led the Rabbitohs to yet another preliminary final exit, but they would go on to win the comp the following season, where he also scored a brilliant try. Burgess, and now it's George Burgess. He's going all the way. He would finish his 2013 season playing in England's World Cup squad and would go on to play 17 games for his country. He would play 149 games for the Rabbitohs, played for Wigan in the Super League in 2020 and only 4 games for the Dragons in his NRL return in 2022, where he played most of the season in the New South Wales Cup. He would play for Brothers in Cairns in 2023 where he led his team to Grand Final Glory, which was his final Rugby League match. Burgess has actually taken up a career in acting thanks to his connections with Russell Crowe from his time at South Sydney. Burgess played a bouncer in a new comedy film, Christmas. 2014, Luke Brooks. After playing one brilliant game in 2013, scoring a try. Brooks is there once again. He's everywhere. Showing it! Luke Brooks on debut. 
Luke Brooks took that confidence into a full season in 2014, making the number 7 jersey his own. He went on to play 205 games for the Tigers, which included winning the Dallium Halfback of the Year award in 2018. Brooks has recently signed with the Manly Seagulls for the 2024 season and will commence his 12th season shortly after this recording. 2015, Jack Bird. Playing most of the 2015 season at 5'8", Jack Bird showed some brilliant speed and agility in the Sharks' backline, scoring eight tries which included a double against the Roosters in his second match. The bird, bird, he won a premiership with the Sharks the following season and would go on to play five Origin games for the Blues. After playing 66 games for the Sharks, 17 games for the Broncos and 59 games for the Dragons, Bird is still playing for the Wollongong based club and if he stays healthy, he could be a big influence for the Dragons in 2024 and beyond. 2016, Ash Taylor. Coming through the Broncos system and getting one game in first grade in 2015, there was simply no room for Ash Taylor in the Brisbane squad, with Anthony Milford and Ben Hunt in the form of their careers. This forced Taylor to move down the M1 to the Gold Coast, where he impressed many at the halfback position. His performance against South saw him score a try and kick the match-winning field goal in Golden Point extra time. Peach goes to Taylor. Taylor steadies under pressure. An 8th place finish and qualifying final exit against his old club was certainly an improvement and opening the potential of a new star halfback. A few good seasons saw him become one of the highest paid players in the NRL, but form slumps and personal issues saw him spend some time away from first grade and an ongoing hip injury led to his retirement in 2022. Taylor has taken up mentoring in the Big Buddy program as part of Darling Downs Health as an Indigenous Project Support Officer, took up a coaching role for Newtown Lions in Toowoomba's Rugby League competition in 2023, and is now signed as a captain coach for brothers in the same competition, which would see him return to Rugby League for the first time since 2022. 2017, Nick Kotrick. Playing the whole 2017 season with the Raiders, with 2016 winger Edric Lee signing with the Sharks, Nick Kotrick was a huge addition to the Canberra side, scoring 16 tries which included this brilliant solo try against the Eels. Here's Kotrick, the teenager, steps inside the fullback. Two years later he would play just the one match for the Blues and two matches for Australia. A quick injury impacted 14 game stint for the Bulldogs in 2021 saw him return to Canberra where he has played 127 games for the club to date and is still playing for the Green Machine at the time of recording. 2018, Jermaine Asako. Starting off his career at the Broncos, Jermaine Asako was a point scoring machine in 2018, scoring every single point in his team's 9-7 win over the Tigers and scored an incredible game-winning try against the Roosters in round 11. Them. He's confused, he didn't know whether to kick or whether to run. He takes the ladder option, Jermaine Asako! An 11 try, 239 point rookie season earned him a New Zealand jersey playing two games at the season's end and would go on to play eight games for his country, which included scoring a double in New Zealand's 30 nil thrashing of Australia in 2023. First play! A season on the Gold Coast in 2022 saw him play 11 games before he joined the Dolphins for their inaugural season in 2023, where he had a breakout year winning the top try scorer in the NRL with 24 tries, the top point scorer with 244, and the Dallium Winger of the Year, which sets up a promising few years for the New Zealand International. 2019, Payne Haas. Instantly becoming one of the most damaging forwards in the game, Payne Haas's big, athletic frame combined with his speed makes him so difficult to tackle. He has proven this during his short, ongoing career, which all started in 2019, where he made 102 tackle breaks in that season, which is an average of 4.85 a game. He also scored four tries, with his first being against the Roosters in round 10. Oh, here. Here's Payne Haas. Is he the man? He capped off his rookie season with the Dallium Prop of the Year, played the one game for the Blues and played two games for the Kangaroos. Haas has gone on to win a further two Dallium Prop of the Year awards and has played 104 games for the Broncos where he continues to play. 2020, 
Harry Grant. Even though Harry Grant was signed with Melbourne, the Storm loaned him to the Tigers to get a taste of first grade with Cameron Smith playing his final season. The move proved to be a success for Grant, utilising his speed out of dummy half and taking on the line himself, resulting in some brilliant tries. Grant with a dummy and almost untouched Harry Grant. His impressive rookie season earned him a Maroons jersey in the deciding game three, coming off the bench where he also scored a try. From the line. Grant gets it on to Welch and he gets it back to Grant. Grant puts the head down. Oh! He has played eight games each for Queensland and Australia, including a World Cup win. He returned to Melbourne after the 2020 season and has played 77 games to date. 2021, Sam Walker. The son of former NRL player Ben Walker has continued his father's legacy as a first grade rugby league player and it all started in 2021 for Sam Walker. The 19 year old owned the number 7 jersey for the Chooks, pulling off some brilliant performances including scoring a try and setting up three tries in only his second match against the Sharks. Walker holds it up, pulls the trigger, and there's the try! He kicked a few game-winning field goals, including one against the Titans in the qualifying final. Has time, strikes yeah, it, it, and he has kicked it! He's done it again. And the semi-final exit capped off an excellent rookie season, and he has played 56 games for the Roosters and continues to play for the Tricolors. 2022, Jeremiah Nanai. He's got up a couple of times, Jason, in talking to the people that take him. Look out. Here goes Nanai. He's got support. Scoring 17 tries in his 23-game rookie season, Jeremiah Nanai became a massive influence on the Cowboys' unexpected rise to the top four in 2022. His explosive line running and high ball contests made him a great addition to the Cowboys' attack. He helped the Cowboys reach the preliminary final and represented both his state and country in that rookie season, playing all three games for Queensland's 2022 series win and played two games for Australia's World Cup final win, scoring a try in each of those matches. Ball movement here, they split the line, oh that's brilliant! With six and a half to go, yo, Cherry Evans, ball there. He has played 40 games for the Cowboys and has plenty of potential to improve as a first grade player. And 2023, Sunya Taruva. With the departure of Charlie Staines, it was the perfect opportunity for Sunya Taruva to become Penrith's new starting winger. That's what Taruva did in 2023, scoring 12 tries in his 26 games, which included a double in the qualifying final win against the Warriors. He helped the Panthers win their third consecutive grand final and is still signed with the Panthers, becoming the most recent Rookie of the Year. So, what did you think of our list? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, chuck us a like on Facebook and this video, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our channel for more Rugby League Countdowns.